Remember that peripheral vascular disease is sort of a um, all-inclusive term for arterial and venous disease that occurs in the extremities. Now, it's very rare for someone to have upper extremity vascular disease. We don't see DVTs in the upper extremities, and we rarely see arterial disease in the upper extremities, which is kind of weird, right? It, it's just bizarre that uh, that vascular disease doesn't affect the upper extremities. Now, we do see DVT in uh, the upper extremity if there's some um, uh, instrumentation of the upper extremity vessels, uh, subclavian lines or things like that. But by and large, we don't see arterial disease in the upper extremities. In the lower extremities, we do. Now remember the anatomy that we have to think of as you're going from outside to inside, you, uh, you access nerve first, then artery, then vein, and then the lymph. So the nerve is out here, the artery is here, the vein is here, and the lymph is uh, furthest to the median aspect. And that's important when you're putting in lines and doing things like that. Now, let's talk about the differences between arterial disease and venous disease. You learned these in undergraduate, but it's important to remember them now because now it counts, right? Now you need to be able to differentiate these things uh, if you're a nurse practitioner. And uh, this is how you do it. So typically, venous disease is painless. There's no pain that occurs with um, chronic venous insufficiency. You get good circulation. The blood flow gets to the distal extremity very well. But because of some obstruction to flow, whether it's obesity or some other reason, um, frequently it's obesity, there is uh, a, an impediment to flow getting back to the heart. Well, the blood has to stay somewhere and it just stays in the distal extremities. So again, painless, warm, normal pulses, edematous, you'll see dark pigmentation and late in the disease, you can have ulcerations that are also painless uh, at the ankles, either in the medial uh, or the lateral aspect of the ankles. Now contrast that with arterial disease, which is a totally different story. Arterial disease causes pain because there's not enough blood flow to the extremities. I had a guy on the treadmill a couple weeks ago um, who had seen his primary care provider for some time. He was a middle-aged guy. He was like 45 or so. Um, had seen his primary care provider and told him about this leg pain. And that he had, you know, he had had a neurology consult and all these other people had seen him. Well, nobody stopped to take a history and know that he was a lifelong smoker and that he really had claudication. Every time he walked, he got pain in the legs. Nobody did that. Nobody went through the, that one little step of actually talking to the patient and getting a history. So he gets on the treadmill and his legs are killing him. The further he goes, the worse the pain is. Well, that's claudication. And that, uh, that describes arterial disease. Now, we may also see cool extremities if the blood flow uh, is really limited. Uh, we often see diminished or absent pulses. Uh, and that's why, you know, we have to get um, uh, Doppler devices and check for pulses. And uh, particularly in these patients, when they undergo surgery, we want to make sure that they don't have a, a ischemic extremity or something of that nature. No edema typically occurs with this. Uh, often the skin is pale or even red, uh, that ruber that occurs with um, uh, chronic arterial insufficiency. Remember that the extremities are usually uh, thin. They usually have thin skin, shiny, uh, hairless, and then there may be ulcerations at pressure points. So here are some examples. Somebody has uh, shoes that rub right here. He has arterial disease. Uh, again, not edematous, but he gets this arterial uh, insufficiency ulcer. You can see here this extremity is very 
um, Palaris, right? Is that a word? Palaris. Uh, it's, it has power. There's very little coloration to it. Um, and then here's another example. This is actually purple toes, but we'll talk about that um, in a different setting. Purple toes, well, I'll talk about it now. Purple toes often uh, are associated with um, uh, emboli from the arteries, from the aorta. When we do cardiac catheterization or some other ar uh, arterial instrumentation, sometimes uh, we knock off pieces of cholesterol um, and those embolize to the distal extremities and you end up with purple toes like that. Uh, here's an example of Ruber. So you can see how red this is compared to this extremity. Uh, and there's ulcers here, again, at pressure points where something is rubbing against those um, toes. Now contrast that with what we see in venous disease. Here's varicose veins and spider veins. You can see the spider veins here. And varicose veins are where the, uh, the valves in the veins that keep the blood from refluxing uh, fail. And so blood refluxes down lower into the vein. That increases the volume of the vein and you get that um, typical varicosity. So these are pictures of chronic venous insufficiency, and I want you to recognize a couple of things. First of all, obesity, right? So people with big bellies have an impediment to blood flow returning to their heart, and that blood flow limitation is from their big belly. It puts higher pressure, intra-abdominal pressure, on the um, uh, vena cava, and that means that the uh, blood volume has difficulty returning back to the heart. So these patients need to keep their legs elevated um, uh, at night. And they usually notice that their ankles are much thinner in the morning than they are uh, at the end of the day. Nurses, big occupational hazard here. That's why you got to wear those support hose. Hate to say it, but the other thing that you should notice is this dark discoloration that only goes to the knee and uh, is associated with the uh, larger diameter uh, of the leg here. So that dark pigmentation uh, that you see even more pronounced here is an indicator of chronic venous insufficiency. That's really, I mean, that's how it happens, is from chronic venous insufficiency, it causes this hyperpigmentation, and that's what it is. Here are the venous ulcers. Um, these venous ulcers are painless, believe it or not, and they're just ugly and they need um, treatment. So usually, you know, we send these patients to the wound center. They put una boots on, um, tight wraps that keep the... Um, uh, venous pressure to a minimum and allow for healing of that uh, ulcer. This is a more dramatic example and if you look at the notes of this slide you'll see uh, the description but I've seen this a million times as well. As that venous insufficiency worsens the skin takes on certain characteristics, right? We talk about the dark pigmentation and all that, and there is some of that happening here, but the skin really suffers as well, and you get this, um, uh, this scaling that happens, um, and, and it's typically not all the way down to the ankle. It's usually somewhere in the higher pressure areas of the leg.